Okay, let's have a look at this little fella. So what's going on here? This is a Makita DHS680 from 2020. But if you look at it, it looks completely new, like brand new. Look at the look at the cutting blade, like it's not even marked at all. So this has got got a problem. The customer says that uh, it's just dead. So let's see what happens when I put the battery on there and I press the trigger. Aha, it tries to turn, but doesn't. The light comes on. Hmm, I'm guessing on this 2020 model that the controller and the stator were one unit like you can't, you can't separate them so if you're going to change anything you have to change everything which isn't so what should we say like economically uh, smart but uh, you know we're making a youtube video here so let's just give it a try okay let's take this one off here Clip there. This knot here, this is left hand thread. So do it up. Do it up to undo it if you understand what I mean. These two are coming off. Okay, that one you can see this smaller side of us was down. we got here we've got the controller the battery terminal switch if we look at this and there's not much to it nothing looks burnt Make sure this one doesn't fly off somewhere. Little springs and stuff. Okay. Oops. Can have a look here. Color in there. It looks a bit discolored, actually. The um, the grease in there looks a bit dark. Hmm. Interesting. Let's put that to the side. Here's the uh, the rotor. Gonna get that out. I'm gonna put it in the vise. Just gonna tap it out. Have a look at the rotor. Mhm. Mm That's not the best. Can you can see here the laminations? Laminations, but that maybe was where I just took it out. Under these screws to hold that stator down. Here. And that came out. Inspect down inside here. No problems. Nothing's looking burnt. No burnt sections. No melted plastic. So it hasn't. I don't think it's gone hot. And you can see here what I mean with this. 
So this is the controller. And now we've got the stator. And you can see here the stator is soldered. So even if we undo these screws, then this piece is gonna be soldered onto there. I mean, of course you can desolder it, but you can't buy this part separately, so. So, that's not very good. Okay, let's have a look here at the switch so we can remember the, the white one is in the middle. And this red, well, I mean, it's pretty obvious to remember, so red goes to the plus. There we go. Now, these are a little bit interesting, these the way this clips on in here, there's a little catch. So you have to push the catch in to get these off. And again, this is marked positive red, but negative black. AS, this yellow one. AS, I think is something to do with the, uh, I don't know, sense, sensing. Sensing the voltage, I could be wrong about that. Maybe just made that up. <laughs> okay, so here's some parts which I purchased. So that's the stator. A couple of screws. And controller. So first we're going to assemble that. So we can see on the, on the back of the rotor here we've got some magnets. Very very strong magnets. And those and signals via these, which I presume are Hall effect sensors. So they detect changes in the magnetic field. So it's up on the back. And it's pretty obvious that it goes in like this. Okay, and then which way up does this go? I would say, huh, that actually looks a little bit messy in there, doesn't it? I would say that that goes face down like that. And you can see, whereas before, the contacts were made with these soldered tabs. Now, the contact is made by the tabs that you screw into. So now if you have a problem with the controller, you can set, you can change just the controller. You don't have to change, change the stator as well. So that's an improved design. And I believe they've had a lot of problems with these. So being able to change just the controller is much better for not just the customer, but for Makita as well. 
because of all the warranty cases that they will avoid now. How many screws we got? One, two, three, four, five, six screws. Have I got enough yet? Yeah. That's good. And then the red one was to the plus. And now we can look a little bit at how the wires were because we want it to go into the shell nicely. So let's try that. The white one in the middle. And then we can see that these wires were bent around the back of there. So we want to do the same again. So that sits almost underneath like 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 that, I guess. So that sense wire. I'm calling it a sense wire anyway. and the black wire to negative okay maybe like that we'll see when we put it into the shell uh, let's just check that I did these ones up Enough. If I was being really fastidious, then I would probably tighten across, but I don't think it makes any difference to be honest. Alright, let's now what we want to do is we want to put this back in here. So that's sat in there like that. Those wires going down. Push in as far as we can. Maybe I'll just use the old one. I guess that this is pushing down at least a little bit on the stator and also maybe even directing air from the fan. This is this is a fan on the end of the rope. So let's put them back in there. Get your fingers caught. Listen for the noise change again. And then back. Check that the thing still works. Yep. Okay. At this point, maybe we could check that the blade rotates without making any horrible noises. Good. Right. 
try and tilt this up a little bit with the battery so you can see it. So let's think about how this went in there. Did it go in face down? The cables went this way. This one came around and then went down in there, kind of face first, I would say. Is that correct? Looks pretty good. The cables sit nicely, and if the cables sit nicely, then most of the time it's correct. But I don't know. What if we turn that 90 degrees? Cables also sit nicely. Yeah, I think it's like that actually. I would definitely say that's it like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this one it goes up to the little LED that can go in first I think. And you notice on my keyters they've always got these like channels for the cables to go in and that's just really fits really nicely okay put that one in there let's do it down pop the cable in nice and this one obviously is going to go that way nicely in there. Make sure that the cables are inside the shell because you don't want to squeeze them later when you put the shell together. Press the cables into the channels. That looks super neat. So that's good. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Like this little battery indicator in there. Only goes in one way. Pretty good. Don't forget about this bad boy that we took out earlier. That sits there and the spring goes there. Yeah, there we go. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now for this one to go on here, need to, it was the washer went on first and then we've got our left threaded nut here okay then we can use this to do it, do it up okay let's see does that move? That does not move. Open it up. Now it moves. Okay, I think that's pretty good. That one there. And then I need some kind of a tongue. Okay. Sounds good. Looks good. Job done.